Hi and welcome back to The Farmhouse. I'm Deanne from Hummingbird Acres and today I'm going to answer a question that we often get which is how did we get into homesteading? And a lot of people get into homesteading because of the food and for us it actually had nothing to do with the food. So I can't wait to share with you guys how we got into homesteading and what our next steps are and kind of what is our five-year plan. So welcome to The Farmhouse and let's dive in. So I figured the best time to film this video was while I was doing laundry because I have lots of laundry to catch up on because the kids got sick last week. So we're going to fold some laundry and have a little chat. So last week on Instagram, we got the question, how did we get into homesteading? And when other people answer this question, a lot of times they answer it with, they wanted to know more about where their food came from and they wanted to be more sustainable and the food have more food security and where all of those things are definitely important to us, they're not how we got into homesteading. Um, we got into homesteading in the spring of 2020. We were visiting uh, the Sedalia Center in Sedalia, Virginia, where I work part-time for in marketing, and we were doing some volunteer work, and they have a huge flower bed out front that needed some attention, like desperately needed some attention, but it was covered in poison ivy, and Jamie is highly allergic to poison ivy, and we, I did not feel comfortable with us working in the garden out front with a young baby, poison ivy, and everything that was going on in the world and not being in our state if we needed to go to the hospital or urgent care. So here we were in a different state in the middle of a pandemic with a highly allergic person to poison ivy and a garden full of it. So. I, the first thing I did was I turned to Google and I just started Googling how to get rid of poison ivy naturally because at the Sedalia Center we try to do things all natural. We try not to use any pesticides or anything that's really going to harm the earth. So I started Googling and that is when I found 10th Acre Farm and I came across the idea of permaculture. Now, if you don't know what permaculture is, real quick, easy, and simple, it is intentionally designing the landscape to steward the land, but also provide for us humans. So provide us with food and all that. So you're stewarding the land and taking care of the land, but also taking care of and providing for yourself and your family. So I found 10th Acre Farm and she had so many valuable resources on permaculture and growing food. I just became completely wooed by the idea of growing our own food, having beautiful landscapes that were beautiful, but they also provided for us but they also took care of themselves. And I was just, I, I went down the rabbit hole and I went deep, deep down the rabbit hole. But I did also figure out a way to kill um, poison ivy. So I did accomplish my goal in that respect. But so I dove deep into 10th Acre Farm and read her book, which I will, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now, but I will link it below for you. Um, but I read her book and I was just so enamored. Um, and after I found her, I found the blog Homestead and Chill, which is another gardening, she does a little bit of permaculture, but hers is more gardening blog. And she was at the time gardening on like less than an acre. And it was just amazing. And I just, like I said, became completely wooed with the idea 
of growing our own food, providing for our family, and just living a better life. And I remember laying in bed and sharing all of this stuff with Jamie, and it was kind of like, it was, it became clear, like, permaculture and homesteading was what we were supposed to do. It just, it felt right. It felt, it was kind of like a calling. This is what we were supposed to do. So when we got home from that trip, we, we had a garden and we had planned on planting it and growing it, but it became, we were a little more determined and we didn't grow much. We grew tomatoes and zucchini that year and we didn't amend the soil. We didn't really know much about amending soil or anything like that. We started our seeds and we planted our garden and we had an amazing zucchini harvest and we had a mediocre tomato harvest. During that summer I also started our sourdough starter and got completely involved and just over the top enamored with sourdough and all the things that you could make from it. Jimmy was buying me so many bags of flour at the store. It was actually quite comical. But once we, we dove into that and then fall came and now like we had collected so many resources and we had learned so much and we had some big plans some big, big plans. And one of my, I remember ending 2020 and my biggest goal being that I wanted to grow enough tomatoes the following year that I could can tomatoes and we wouldn't have to buy sauce for making pizza. Cause sourdough pizza had become a Friday night tradition. So that was my goal going into our 2021 garden. And, you know, we, Jamie and I talked and we planned and we added on, um, I think it started with four raised beds and then which turned into eight raised beds. And over the winter, I discovered cut flowers and we decided that we were going to add cut flowers to the garden and we were going to do veggies and cut flowers and we were just going to grow everything and grow all of this stuff. And you know, looking back on that, you know, we did. We grew a lot in 2020. We grew a lot of flowers, we grew a lot of veggies, we grew a whole hell of a lot of tomatoes. So I did accomplish that goal. And our dreams just, they kept growing. And we learned a lot and our dreams kept growing and growing and growing. So as you can see, our start into homesteading and farmhouse living and permaculture was not because of our food. <laughs> the food was a byproduct. Our start into homesteading was poison ivy, which is funny, but it's also a great story for us to tell. So we began homesteading and learning about homesteading and wanting to live this lifestyle all because Jamie is highly allergic to poison ivy and we needed to clean poison ivy out of a flower bed. So there you have it. So let's, I want to dive into just a little bit of like where we are now and, you know, our vision and our dreams. So I don't remember when exactly it was, but we have always had the dream of moving to Sedalia, Virginia, which is a very royal um, community in central Virginia. We just love it there. And we have been called to move there for a couple years, even before we got into homesteading or any of that, you know, we were, we were down there for an event and Jim and I both just agreed one afternoon that, you know, we were meant to be here. We were meant to move here. You know, we really felt like we fit in there. And we created a five-year plan for ourselves. And that plan included a lot. And it built on a lot of the things that we were already doing. 
uh, we both knew that we needed, in order to move, we needed to have, we needed to both work from home and work for ourselves. We needed to be self-employed. Well, I had already left the classroom at that point and was running the daycare, so that was, that was easy for me, but I knew that going, moving to a new place, I didn't want to get into daycare, so I needed to pursue my marketing and social media management avenue. So that was part of our very early plan and our very early goal. Jamie at the time was working for a family-owned company doing bookkeeping, which he loved, but he couldn't stay there in order for us to fulfill our dreams. So he started thinking about branching out on his own and doing bookkeeping on the side. And we really started to build those businesses. I grew the daycare so that he could come home and then we could both pursue creating our own businesses. And all of that came completely tumbling down in 2020 when we had to close the daycare and then we're not able to open it again because of financial reasons. And it was hard, it was really hard, and that is about the same time that we discovered homesteading and permaculture and all of that. And finding that niche and finding homesteading and learning so much about it and in the season of life that we were in, it was perfectly fitting. And it just kind of put all of the pieces together for us. So we created a new plan <laughs> and it was still our five year plan, but it just kind of changed a little bit. And we both started pursuing really hard being self-employed and doing things for ourselves. In a nutshell, as hard as 2020 was, it definitely was a blessing for us. It really catapulted us into what we were and what we feel like we are called to do, which is homesteading. So we have new plan and new goals and a new vision. And that is we want, we still want to move to Sedalia, Virginia. Um, we want to buy a farm. And if we can't buy one, and I don't know necessarily if we want to buy one that's already established, but we want to build a farm. We want a farmhouse. Now, if that can't be built, like the first, like as soon as we are ready to move, that's fine. We are okay with living in our camper. We love our camper. Um, so we are definitely flexible on like living situation. I do have my dream house in mind and what I want it to look like, but it's not something that I have to have like right now in order to move. So farmhouse, we want barns. We want land that's a mixture of open land and forested land so that we could harvest the trees to burn and heat our home. And we want, the big thing, the first thing, is we want a huge garden. Huge, huge garden. We want to be able to grow more, more than we can grow here. We want to be able to provide for our family and have some to provide for others. We also want to expand on all of our cut flowers. And I would love to have a farm where... We have a huge vegetable garden, we have a huge cutting garden, and we have farm animals, and it's more of like a destination, more of like an all-inclusive destination. People come to the farm to have events and to have a whole farm experience. So you can come and do you picks and cut flowers. You can come and do like mini baby showers on the farm in the pavilion. You can come and just visit the animals if you want. If it's the right property and if it's big enough, we would love to have like a pumpkin patch. 
and have just kind of it be family friendly even a strawberry field like that was something that we had talked a lot about as well so our our vision now is you know we are going to start small and you know chickens we can't decide if we're going to do the goat first or a cow first but start small and then just grow it as we grow and our, our skills grow and as our kids get older we feel like we could take on more things so our vision now and our goal now is hummingbird acres and a farm and a market and if you want to know more about how we came about naming our website and how we have already named our farm hummingbird acres I will include a link below to a little bit more about our story and how that name came to be and its meaning toward meaning to us but overall we are super excited for the future and what the future holds for us we have found property here and there over the past year that we really love but something just isn't quite right about it whether it's the timing or just the vibe we get when we get on the property isn't quite right so we are completely content staying here a little bit longer I can say that I do get farm sick every now and then dreaming about what our future holds but we are using our current homestead as our classroom to learn as much as we possibly can so that when we are able to start our dream farm we have tons of knowledge and tons of experience behind us and we cannot wait to share all of everything that we learn and our adventures and our journey and homesteading with you guys so I can't thank you guys enough for being here with us for listening to our stories and just supporting us along the way so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and thank you for visiting the farmhouse and please any questions you have please leave them below any comments we love to hear from you guys and we love to inspire you to live this lifestyle as well. So thanks again and we'll talk to you guys soon.